basically, I've done a bunch of different tours, a bunch of different genres, as well as types of tours. I've done theatrical productions. I've done small stage shows. I've done some arenas, or no, some stadiums, a lot of arenas. This is by far the largest production I've ever done, even compared to some of the stadium stuff I've done. Um, highly challenging in that there's a lot of coordination involved. There's so many departments. Uh, there's not just music and, and um, audio world and lighting, like a rock and roll show. Uh, there's also, we have to deal with the dance department, pyro, uh, video world, and everything. So there's a lot of coordination involved. Even for me to warm up, I have to coordinate when I can even do that. So. It's, it's interesting, it's, but you know, I love it. It's a great world to be in, this tour. I think that you know, I play a bunch of different genres. I enjoy it all, I love the variety of it. It's great to do a rock and roll tour and then jump straight to a pop tour or a theatrical production. Um, all, all of my training was studying all traditional styles, traditional West African, traditional Cuban, traditional Brazilian. Out of necessity of getting into the pop world, I started getting into electronics. That's not really what I had planned on doing. For some reason, now I'm the go-to guy for that stuff, and because of that, I do it well, but it was completely foreign to me coming out of college. Um, but I do enjoy that now. I mean, um, on this tour, uh, I'm playing all traditional hand percussion instruments, as well as triggering tons of electronics. Uh, everything from playing hand claps, to finger snaps, to various sound effects um, and so I find myself coming back to getting those types of calls I think that I'm one of the few percussionists that's able to play traditional as well as uh, have my hand on the technology aspect of it so, and I enjoy it I enjoy it a lot um, I think over the years I've had some trial and error as far as what my standard symbols are for any given gig um, Obviously, there are certain sound effect type sounds that I may need for a specific job, but I have my go-to symbols that have worked for me over the years. I, as a percussionist, I'm accompanying usually a drummer, so I make sure that I don't have symbols that are redundant to what the drummer has, and I also make sure that I don't play anything redundant. So if the, if the drummer is going to crash on a 16 or 18 inch crash symbol, rather than crashing simultaneously with him for an accent, I may do a suspended cymbal swell going into that accent. Or maybe I'll just lay out. Or maybe I'll do something that's short and quick, like hitting a china uh, or, a st or a china stack with a trash warmer, so it's a, 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 a short white noise sound that'll be the punctuation, and, he, and he'll cover the, the length and spread of the accent. So I, I think about those things a lot. So because of that, I have a lot of cymbals that kind of straddle what the drummer uses. Um, basically, I have my go-to cymbal always is a 20-inch orchestral suspended cymbal. I use that kind of for R&B and pop, for ballads, suspended cymbal swells. I use that in rock and roll also, um, whether I'm crashing on it or doing big swells. Um, I do have one standard cymbal uh, for crashes, and that's a 16-inch A custom. And then, um, in addition to that 20-inch K constant ample, Constantinople uh, suspended cymbal, I have an 18-inch, so that has some variety. Other than that, everything turns into effect cymbals, splash cymbals, chinas, and uh, crash former effects type cymbals. And some prototypes I have back here from my last visit to uh, the Zildjian factory. So, and for the most part, like I said, I straddle between what the drummer is using as far as a uh, uh, sound palette. I definitely, I think that any advice I would give, one, I'm sure students hear all the time, there are no shortcuts. So um, practice, practice, practice. Practice doesn't always include, it doesn't always mean you have to spend X amount of hours in the practice room. Practicing is also conceptual. I'm constantly listen to music, check out new styles of music, check out everything. Everything's valid, you know. Um, don't discount certain things that you hear on the radio. Because next thing you know, you're gonna get call into a recording session and you're gonna have to emulate something with whatever your palette of instruments is as a drummer or a percussionist. A drummer may have to go in and emulate um, something that would normally be programmed, you know. And so I would say practice as much as you can. Um, 
once you're out of an educational system, out of college or whatever, you hit the real world, there is no time to practice at all. I don't have time to practice on this tour. At most, I basically do what I like to call damage control. I will uh, just make sure certain chops are there that are necessary for the tour and, uh, or for some of my drum clinics. And that's pretty much all I have time for. I'm giving, I'm giving maybe 15, 20 minutes uh, at each show day, possibly, just to make sure that my chops are there. So practice, listen to music, listen to as many genres as possible, and um, you know, keep an open mind. Those are the most important things. If, if a student follows that, I think they're, they're um, on their way to uh, not having to turn down a gig for one reason or another.